1935, there was a quantum mechanics scientist, and he developed the sort of experiment called Schrodinger's cat. And the whole experiment involved a cat being placed in a box that was sealed, and with the cat in the box was a flask of poisonous gas and some radioactive material. And the radioactive material had about a 50-50% chance of exploding, of activating, which would make the gas explode and the cat to die. Uh, the purpose of this experiment was quite elaborate, but what he wanted to prove is something called superposition. And what superposition is, is that matter, a thing, can take on a variety of states at the exact same point in time, if you can't influence it by opening the box. So what this means is, with us out, with, uh, without us being able to open up the lid of the box, the cat is both alive and dead at the exact same time. And why this is so applicable to what we're experiencing with blockchain today, is one can argue that we are observing two conflicting states at the exact same time. Now, what are these two states? I think there's a piece of hair in my mouth, which doesn't taste great, but the one state that we're seeing is the negative state, our cat that didn't make it through. We could see that blockchain is going nowhere. We are stuck in pilot pool. We can say that open networks are not getting embraced because of confidentiality issues, amongst other things. We could say that private permission-based chains are not getting scaled because it's really hard to try and negotiate and have people agree with conflicting interests and conflicting agendas across an ecosystem. The last thing is that cryptocurrencies might actually just be driven by market sentiment or media coverage, as opposed to actually changing the daily life of the guy on the street. Now, as I said that, I know that there's a lot of cryptocurrency aficionados. I could see that you're having a mini conniption fit, but just bear with me, we're in this together. Positive state is one where we could see, we could observe that there is a revolution, a revolution merely by the fact of big players trying to pursue blockchain technology. The rate at which open networks are able to scale and process more and more transactional volumes. And I think especially from the fintechs that we saw today, such as Trisha's business and Llewellyn's business as well, the fintechs in this space are solving for customer value in extraordinarily new ways. And then lastly, also to Lorian's point before is, the fact that regulators across the globe are not only experimenting with, but embracing this technology is revolutionary. And a special shout out goes to our own very Saab on this. So if we think that we've got these two potential states, what is really holding us back? And I think is that it's time that we need to start moving past basics. Now, what are the basics? The benefits. We are either being too technical or too philosophical when trying to describe and communicate and explain the benefits of blockchain to those that matter most to us, the people that we need to have buy-in from, especially as a business owner. While I, I'm saying that we can be either too technical and too philosophical, we're either running around with this loaded blockchain gun uh, as techies looking for things to shoot out, to shoot at, without being able to really articulate what difference does this make to your, to your business? Or we, we are being so philosophical that nobody actually gets us and we lose our audience within the first five minutes. Moving past the basics, for me, means that we, are, we should, from the really expensive and the really hard lessons that we've learned, move past it to be able to articulate the benefits of blockchain in a much more practical way, a way that actually makes sense. It's one thing to say decentralization or mutability, but you haven't actually made it your own and show to people what it could mean for them. I believe strongly that there's two key changes that, is, that are required for us to not only move past the basics, but to make sure that when we lift up this lid and observe what really happened, that it is a positive state and not a negative state. 
The first one, and I, I think this is the most important because I'm part of this, um, is what businesses should do. How should we change to not only accelerate growth, but to make sure that what we deliver at the end of the day does solve for value. The first one is all around strategy. And this is not only of, of uh, impact to us as a, a bank, I work for Santa Bank, or for bigger incumbents, but also to those of fintechs. What are you actually trying to sell you? What is your strategy? Just utilizing blockchain is not a strategy. It should be used and utilized and leveraged in conjunction of supporting and driving a very specific strategy that you have for your business. So the first checkpoint here in terms of what you need to change is what you're using it for. It's not a magical thing that's going to change your problems overnight or make you future-proof as, as a business or make you instantly um, competitive in this space. It really does need to support a broader business strategy. The second component or the second thing that we need to change as businesses is that around our actual business. How do we run our businesses? How do we do it? Um, I think what one of my biggest gripes when it comes to blockchain or the use cases that we see out there is that it's really being used now to solve for operational inefficiencies. There's other ways that you can solve for operational inefficiencies. And if we think about the roles that we, that we do or what we need to drive in this room is we're visionaries. We strongly believe that a future state of our ecosystems that we live and work in should be drastically different from what they are today. So we want to see this change happen. It's not one thing for us to sit here and, look about, and think about the beautiful way that our lives can evolve without actually changing the way that we do things. And this is of practical use in the businesses. The third component that needs to change is that around commercials. Um, it's also quite widely reported that if you launch your blockchain, if you're able to scale it, because you're cutting out this middleman, what's going to happen is that it will cut down a lot of your operational costs, a lot of your operational time. And because you now can free up this resource that used to do something pretty manual, you can create new value. But that's, again, a very short-term way of thinking about the power of blockchain in your business. What you really should be pursuing is thinking, how do I leverage blockchain to set up a whole new digital business model? How do I create a platform where it solves cross-industry ecosystem problems and not just solve my problem in terms of accounting automated reconciliation within a group? The last thing that I want to focus on just because tea time was so extensively long, so I don't have a lot of time left, is the role that consortiums have to play. I say consortiums because I went to uh, public school, so I don't say consortia. So the role of consortiums is becoming so, so vital, I think, in terms of driving this. And why I say that is we've got two big uh, international consortiums, the R3 and then the Enterprise, uh, the Ethereum Enterprise Alliance. And regardless of who you're a member of now or who you want to join as a member, there are definite pros and cons to joining. What I want to focus on is the SAFPC, not only because I'm the chair, but I really, really believe in terms of this being the catalyst required to drive blockchain adoption, blockchain learnings, and blockchain educational pieces across our landscape. So our objectives are pretty clear. We are there to assimilate information across our organizations. We're there to demonstrate value, both from a tech point of view, and then also the actual impact of the use case that we're looking at. And then the last thing is that around education. How do we educate others about what blockchain is about? Um, our biggest educational hurdle is trying to just state the difference between what a cryptocurrency is and what blockchain really is. And I think there's also a bigger role in addition to these three objectives that a block, that a, a consortium must really think about driving a little bit more aggressively. And it probably will resemble something um, quite close to an emotional support group because as financial institutions are really grappling with this technology, it's a whole new world that's been exposed to us. We know that we will get disintermediated. We know that we need to figure out 
how to make ourselves a little bit more future-proof. But the benefit of a collaborative, um, conducive and open environment such as the consortium driving that, I think our first problem in terms of what we need to do as, or change as businesses should be more apparent. Now, Sonia has asked me to talk about what uh, the banks are doing in this space. I know that everybody's always interested in this. I think banks, in the short answer, banks are doing everything. Um, as, you know, this, this technology has evolved and also as the different banks' capability has evolved in this space, everybody started off with the scanning and experimentation phase. Um, we came across as a little bit of, uh, you know, schizophrenic. That's just because there were so many cool things out there. And we learned at Standard Bank, and I'm sure the other banks as well, that not all use cases are good use cases. Um, and Deloitte actually did a great study, and I'm happy that there's some representation from Deloitte here today. Um, last year, where they found that over 28,000 blockchain use cases that were, that were pursued, in six months, only 8% of them survived. So this also proves to us that A, not only is it really hard to get the network effect, but B, in the banking industry, we really should start to focus on what we see the future of our ecosystems to look like. So in closing, um, note yourself, never Google image dead Schrodinger's cat. You really can't unsee that. I believe strongly that we can see or we can observe this positive state. We do need to move past the basics in terms of how we sell and how we communicate the benefits. And then lastly, key changes are required in our organization as fintechs and as incumbents. And then lastly, never underestimate the power and the drive associated with the collaborative effort to really scale this technology and for us to make peace with the growing pains that we're going through now. And that is it from me.